Paul now turns his guns on the lawsuits among believers. Just as previously in chapter 5, the issue of sexual immorality of incest was about a powerful social elite in the church not being tackled or challenged or even where the church were too afraid or too proud of, uh, of, of their tolerance to do anything about it. Paul tackles that and now he comes to the lawsuits. The powerful are the only ones that have access to the law. They're the only ones through their bribery and corruption and, and, uh, and their, their favouritism that they can bring their lawsuits against those from lower down the social scale. So Paul says this doesn't happen among the uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. This does not happen in the church of Jesus Christ. Notice just in chapter 6 as we go through, Paul says four times, again, when you come to a repeated phrase, it's designed to, to grab our attention. Paul says in verse 2, do you not know? Verse 3, do you not know? Verse 9, do you not know? And verse th uh, 15, do you not know? So Paul is challenging their self-proclaimed wisdom, their self-proclaimed maturity. Do you not know that saints will judge the world? Do you not know that we are to judge angels? Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? And do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ for whom Christ died? Again, Paul is tackling head on the power play within the church. And he does this by a very subtle sense, not well, maybe not so subtle sense of strong irony when he says in verse 12, all things are lawful for me. And what he's doing here is quoting one of the slogans that the Corinthians used to, used to say to justify all of the things that they wanted to do. All things are lawful for me, but Paul says, but not all things are helpful. Grow up, show some maturity. You can't just satisfy every single desire as it comes across your path. Grow up in Christ. Why? Because Christ has died for you. And he shows the Trinity in action twice in this short chapter six, where he says, do you not know four times as I've said, uh, within that context, Paul is saying, don't be deceived by your actions and your self-proclaimed wisdom, which is no wisdom. Do not be deceived, verse 9 again. But then he brings the Trinity to bear. Look at this, verse 11. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Again, as we saw in chapter 5, the abiding redemptive work of, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And again, we see that also at the end of chapter 6, where Paul says, actually, for a fifth time, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Verse 19, the Holy Spirit that is within you, which you have from God, you are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So again, we see the invoking of the Holy Spirit, of God the Father, and, and, and of, of Christ by the, you were bought with a, with a price by the death of Christ on the cross, our sacrificial lamb. Therefore, Paul concludes this terrible couple of chapters. Therefore, glorify God in your body. And now we will turn about to the matters about which the Corinthians wrote to Paul.